So what's that long boat out there with the with the cover flapping on it? It's an aristocraft ski shirt. Ah, okay. And yeah, some aluminum boats here, a few. And uh, that looks like a fiberglass and aluminum boat down there. That must be one of those Chicago jobs. That's a herders. Herders, yeah. Good painted up behind your uh, truck. You have quite a few down there. Uh huh. Four or five. Well, I'm dyslexic, so I can't on, count. On which, on which side? <laughs> you know, I take a lot of these boats into foster care. That looks like a glass bar uh, weekender. Seafair. Seafair. Glass bar seafair, but. That must have been when it was bought out by Glassbar. I mean, uh, not Glassbar. It was bought out by the next company because that bottom is not a Glassbar bottom. No, I was going to say it's not. It's not flat. No, it's a V bottom. And that company that bought them out, I forget what the, who they were. Uh, whatever. Maybe I'll think of it before the end of the time we're looking at these. Was it Penyon? Did they buy them? Out? No, Penyon didn't buy them out. No, it was that. Glass, glass, something. I've got one similar to this. You do? And this is a Corson. This is the famous 14 foot Corson. Jerry Corson didn't like it, but I do like it. I think it runs pretty good. Let's get a good look at this. This is the thing. Jerry had a 12-footer. He liked that a lot with fins. He had a uh, this 14-footer, and then he had the 16-foot, which I own. I like and the fins. This one's narrow, and it rolls good. I like the I like the way this one rides. I like it a lot. Been in it. I never saw one until after Jerry was gone. This is the first one I've ever seen. Got through my whole life. So this is. A Del Mar, David? Yes, it is. All right. I saw this one on Craigslist, and I said, oh, a Del Mar. It was for free. And uh, I said, I don't need any more boats, but that boat is too cool. So it occurred to me I could tell John the plumber about it and get him excited. And I said, I'm a genius. It'll be in the club. And it won't be in my yard. <laughs> and I went to his house, and three days later he called me and said, Can I put that boat in your yard for a couple of weeks? And that was about five years ago. <laughs> I, I think I know where there's another one of these. Really? Yeah, it's got a fat 50 on the back. It's right on 105, right there, out near Buzzy's General. Really? Wow. I didn't mean to stop, but usually I'm right headed for my father's house for full speed. These are cool boats. The guy who designed these things was. Really genius, really genius. I He's, like the color; it matches my old truck. Yeah, it does. There you go. I don't need another boat. <laughs> you sure? What you got your hand on is that must be not yours. This one's not mine. This is uh, a Beetle Cat. Okay. Beetle Cat. And what about this Johnson with the forty? What the heck's that thing? Feathercraft Clipper. Feathercraft Clipper. Deluxe Clipper. Is this the one you had twin for Mark 58 A's on? Yeah. This is actually the uh, same model, but this is Peter's. Oh, okay. Oh, this is Peter's. Yeah. Peter Sargent. Oh, it's mine now. Oh, it is. I sold mine and got this one. Oh, I see. Metal. Okay. Interesting boat. These are great boats. Almost, too. it's like they have built-in sun seats. You know, yeah. the bottoms are real long for sunning. And these things ride nice. Uh, I had two 58 A's on one of these, uh, and uh, it was called the Corson Eater. <laughs> <laughs> that, that really ran great. The Corson Eater, huh? Just because you could beat my, you thought you could beat my, my Mark thought. 50 too, didn't you? Not that I thought. They <laughs> zipped past you and saw you, a grimace on your face. It did. 
Well, I knew it was going to happen. I had no I never choice. Never saw that side of Lincoln before. Yeah. <laughs> the grimace. The grimace. Wait, wait till my boat hits the water. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm working on something. <laughs> so this is a Tower of Power I-6, A. It is a Merc 100. A Merc 1000, excuse me. 100 horsepower. All right. This goes pretty good. Nice. And what boat kind of a boat is it on? A Lumacraft Tangier. A Lumacraft Tangier, and it's fiberglass, correct? Yep. All right. Wow, I like the lines. That's a pretty boat. <laughs> I like how that comes back. <laughs> this thing pops out of the water with this motor on it. It's pretty impressive. Well, it popped out after we did a lot of work to it. Yeah, yeah we did a lot of work on that. Is this the one that needed a, a monstrous hook in it? Yes. Yeah. No, it's not the super monster hook. That's that one is. That's I don't know where that, but we haven't seen that yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. And this is a glastron from Texas. Yes, sir. It looks like it does come from Texas. Sat in the Big Texas bold. Sun. Look at the baking of the gel coat. Yeah, they didn't understand gel coat very good back then. I was always under the impression that the gel coat was just there as to help release the boat from the moat. Well, it was, but but they didn't, still didn't understand it. They didn't. They used it to release, but if it's on too thick and it's not mixed well, as you can see, they obviously were trying something and it, it didn't necessarily work all that well. And that is, what is this thing, David? Is this an Alumacraft too? That is an Alumacraft. And what model is this one? This is the Gay Mate. The Gay Mate, okay. A club member stiffed me on this one. He right? did. He made me take this boat in order to get a motor that's that so I wanted. So. Well, I gave you the 35, it's all ready to go. It's one of the few engines you've got that's absolutely tuned to the hilt. I almost got you to take this. Year. Well, almost, but not quite. You're I want right the on one the that's square. I want the one that's a couple of years before this. And that would this be the, the right one. boat to put that McCulloch 75 on. They didn't make one a couple of years before this. This is the right one. Well, uh, not the ones I've seen. Not the ones they were racing in Australia. No. And what's that thing over there? That is that, a huh? Aristocraft Funliner. Aristocraft Funliner. And what are you going to put on this thing for power, David? April Morn. This one is uh, rated for 100 horsepower. I was thinking about putting that Mercury on it. Uh-huh. Do you think it would go better on this boat than it did in the other one? Not better, but it'd be fun. 58, 59, yeah, typically. Fins on it. Yeah, they were a year afterwards, so. This has uh, fiberglass stringers. A piece of wood in here. It's got a rotten transom. No, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> it will. She's got a hook in the bottom. I can tell you that. You'd have to fill that in with. Uh... And what's this boat over here? This looks like a Corson, a fairly new one in the 80s. Yeah, that's right. 1986, 15 foot Corson. Yeah. Well, it is. They do ride nice. He, his last ones were good. They weren't flat bottom. And so what's this thing right here? Look at that nice sailboat. Matt looks like he needs a sailboat, doesn't he? What's that? You need a sailboat. Look at that. Nice tandem trailer. Wow. This would make a good bachelor apartment in the yard. And it blows.
And it does have a lot of characteristics of the, like the one I have, though. Yeah, the decks and stuff are the same, but the but the hull bottom is not. And I'll right. tell you, it's um, the plumber's boat's the same. Same. Uh, yeah. You know, you had one of these. These are infamous boats. That must be a Sears game fisher. That, with that, you're correct, but it was made by, uh, I think this was made by MFG as they were sinking into total bankruptcy. And typically they've been rebuilt, and as you can see, there's lots of fiberglass because they went cheat on the uh, resin, and they were very dry, and they fell apart quite quickly. But they were sold by the millions. Oh, my God, yeah. I, some of my high school buddies had them. Or acquaintances, I should say. And this is, what's this one, David, over here? This looks like a square stern canoe. Cedar strip. Uh, I don't know the maker. Okay. I think a, a lot of people, where did he sell those kits? A lot of people build these in their basement and garage as kits. Nice looking boat. Glass? It's a good idea. Like Bud said, throw away the canvas, put fiberglass on it so you can use it. So what's this boat right here, David? It's a Lone Star Continental. Lone Star Continental? All right. Well, let's just see. Have you run this boat? Yeah. You have. Huh, okay. And this boat over here with the silver cover on it. Is, is this the one that we took the hook out of? Yeah. Is this the cabin cruiser? The infamous cabin cruiser. Well, let's see what we got for a picture of this one. She's soft, Matt. Probably ought to go around the other way. You got a mark. Any Mark 58, is it, or Merc 500? Merc 500. Merc 500. And look at that. Look, he has a official steering wheel on this thing. Looks nice up there. And his 404 bearing compound is up there too. All right. Looking for that. So how does this thing go? This goes great after I took the hook out of it. <laughs> Is this the boat that you didn't believe me that you had a hook in the bottom? The one that I learned about hookers. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Stay away from them. Yeah. <laughs> and this boat down here, what is this um, beast? This is a project. This is uh, a uh, Doronautic hull. Okay. And I had a uh, Crestliner Mandalay. Um, cabin cruiser where the hull was beat to crap. It was in terrible condition. But this deck... Uh, Pretty much the same deal. Could be rescued. This is a project. Yes, it could be. Yeah, yeah. And at some yeah. point I realized I could, I might be able to take this deck and mount it on this perfect hull. This Doronautic has a crappy deck. It's very uninteresting and it's a pretty rugged boat. So I took the uh, deck off the Crestliner, planning to... The Crestliner Mandalay? Mandalay. That's yeah. good, yeah. But then I found the Super Glass. That's the Super Glass. That's the Super Glass. You should get a good shot of this. Super Hook. Yeah, Super Hook. All right. If this thing was totally redone. Floor, transom gel coat. The previous owner had all the hardware sent out to be re Wow. I have all the receipts. He spent thousands of dollars restoring this boat. And uh, this gel coat is faded. It's starting, to, it's starting to crack too. Yeah. Paint. Prob probably I don't know. I, I guess you just have to... What kind of a boat is this? Uh, Alumacraft. Alumacraft. Okay, what model is this one? This is a ski shirt. A what? Ski shirt. Okay. 
at this very nice Mercury wheel. Got a face plate that's not all cracked and broken. What year is the, is the boat? This, I think, is a 60. 60? I would say the steering wheel was a 60. They didn't come out with those till after. 62, I think they came out with those. I put that wheel on there. Oh, you did? Okay. Got a 70s look to it, you know? You don't, you, you say you wouldn't mind letting go of that boat? It wouldn't pain you to let go of stuff? A no. couple of boats? No. Very free of it. Okay. As long as I can replace them. As long as I can fill the vacuum. That would make somebody a really nice that would make somebody a nice boat. boat. Yeah. It's even got a busted windshield with it. Okay, David, so this is a super glass. This is the one that had the hook in the bottom. Okay. So, David, can I ask you, where do you find the time to run all these boats? You've got quite a few. Are you retired? I mean, I, three months. Out or are you just tired? <laughs> I'm pre-retired. <laughs> pre-retired. I see. <laughs> it's coming. I think you've got a few um, projects here. I've got. Yeah. So, so let's continue on and and see some more of the magic barn on the un, the second the basement floor. Oh, okay. Matt, what do you think about these windows here? <laughs> that look familiar? Some people think that uh, looks like the Ford Thunderbird. Had those yeah, they had the back. vanity windows. Yeah. I think it's a nice touch.